Frank Everett, and welcome to Frank's Files. I am so excited to be here today. I'm here with my friend, Staline Velandis, who is not only a, a fellow jewelry enthusiast, she is an author and, of course, the, the editor-in-chief of Town & Country Magazine. So, Celine, thank you for having thank us. Thank you. I'm so glad we finally did this. Finally. We've been talking for about two years to do a video together, yes. and this is the perfect time because I have some great stories to share with you, and I'm, I'm interested to hear what you're going to share with me about some of these stories. No, I can't wait to Great. So dive let's in. dive in. Can I ask you first how you became to be such a jewelry lover? How did this all happen? I mean, I think some people would use the word fanatic, fanatic. maybe more than lover. I was born into a jewelry family, and you know, every holiday or birthday was celebrated with a jewelry gift. Uh, so, as it should be. As it should be. When I began to really love it is when I began to understand how it is linked to everything else, to history, to geography, to politics, to society, to the patterns of wealth in the world. My whole mission has been to make sure that people see it that way. You highlight, um, especially in the pages of Town & Country, so many different types of jewelry, and it's, it spans, you know, decades and decades. Yes, so. I, I think it's so important, and you do this so well, also to share our enthusiasm. I think we're both sort of like jewelry evangelists, we right? We, we spread the good word. <laughs> as much as we celebrate and remind people about the great traditions of jewelry, it's also our job to be patrons of young talent. Indeed. And yeah. there has never been more young talent and young great talent in the jewelry world, I think, than right now. I agree. We don't sell a great deal yes. of contemporary jewelry at auction, but I did bring some nice pieces to show you. In fact, maybe we should start there. Let's is go. that a good place yes. to start? Yes. So, um, David Michael is the name of the jewelry company. I first saw it on your Instagram. Ah, yes. And I thought turquoise and amethyst is the, your thing. My thing. That's your thing. It's such a potent combination. Yeah. And so I love that David Michaels, who is, you know, they're a young, yeah. young duo. They make everything by hand. By it's hand. all one, one of, a, of kind, a kind. Is taking this really traditional color combination of yep. stones and it, it doesn't look vintage. No. There is something new about it. I guess we'll work our way backwards in time. I yes. want to show you something else that's very special uh -huh. because, as you know, pink diamonds these are, are pink diamonds. These are pink diamonds. Yes, these are all certified argyle pinks and purplish pinks. Okay, uh, you is... have to know how extraordinary this is. Yes. To get one pink diamond is a miracle. A miracle. I have never seen so many pink diamonds yeah. together. It's incredible. And they're all from the Argyle Mine, which of course is closing next yes. year. Yes. So there's a little bit of a pink panic. So going time on. is running out. Pink, pink panic. Pink panic. That's hashtag pink panic. <laughs> I love that. Right? Let's move now. We're gonna go a little bit further back in time to um, some fabulous pieces from Harry Winston. Okay. So this is unusual for several reasons. I think you saw this earlier when we were setting up. I did up. see this earlier, and this actually is one of my favorite stones. Morganite. Morganite. Yeah. Because it is named after J.P. Morgan. Exactly. One of the great advisors for J.P. Morgan, of course, was um, George, Coons George Coons from Tiffany, and he was a great discoverer of stones. Yeah. And he found this sort of, it has the most beautiful color. This is one of oh, the finest I've ever seen. This, it, it, it's the most beautiful color. And so he named it Morganite after, you know, I love that sort yeah. of like robber baron, exactly. giant of industry, jewelry collector. Yeah. And I think wow. the fact that Harry Winston would choose that Morganite to put in the brooch really speaks to the quality yes. of this stone. Yes, because it's absolutely. not not something you would normally see in high jewelry at Harry absolutely. Winston. Absolutely. So while we're on Harry Winston, I just have to show you a couple of other pieces. These earrings oh, are so before. pretty. The beautiful, the, yeah. the beautiful blush color. These. Um, I don't know if you can really actually see. It's how hard beautiful to see because it is subtle. Are. It is a subtle um, color. It is candlelight. Yeah. This, that's what this is, which of course was the original Instagram filter. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and and then you know I mean I think also people don't realize how changes in the world impact 
jewelry. Yeah. So when electricity became really sort of a household thing, yeah. diamonds started to be cut differently and because they had to flicker in electricity different than they flickered in candlelight. And the, the attention became more focused on the color. Yes, right. right. The D's, people care right. more about a, a more a, right. a whiter diamond right. than they did before. Right. Yeah. Um, but these um, these are like candlelight for your They're face. So pretty. I mean, They're so pretty. they are. You have to see these in person. Though. Harry Winston. They're each about twelve carat. Uh, these pairs and they're fancy it is the light prettiest, brown pink. Prettiest, prettiest color. Love them. So let me tell you a couple of stories of, of okay. some of the great ladies. Great. So one lady that I met this season that I did not know about was a woman named Mary Duncan Sanford. Uh huh. Did you know? No. Did you know the name? No. So Mary Duncan, before she was Sanford, uh -huh. was a silent movie uh, star. Okay. We'll, well call you got her. Me now. She was a silent movie actress. Uh huh. She did a film with Marion Davies. Oh, okay. They were friends. Uh -huh. And as her career was starting to wane, Marion Davies introduced her to a gentleman named Laddie Sanford, who uh -huh. was an international polo player uh -huh. and um, a, the king of Palm Beach society. Uh -huh. So he whisked her off, and that's where she spent the rest of her life, living the life of a great Palm Beach uh -huh. socialite. We have a couple of her jewels uh -huh. here. So I love these two necklaces from her collection because they're so different, but they're both Van Cleef and uh -huh. Arpels. Uh -huh. So you have the classic princess diamond I necklace. I love this. And this was like that amazing necklace you let me try on. It is. It's very much like the Queen Nosley necklace, which is now in Van Cleef and Arpels yes. archive in their museum. And this is a mini version right, of it. Right, and you see that shape. Yep. Those it's little so ribbons signature of baguette. signature Van Cleef and very signature of this period, which is what? Mid-century. Mid-century. Yeah, like, 50s. That necklace was 1939, but the style carried for another 10 right. or 15 years. This is this this perfect oh. example of the 1970s where they were yes. revisiting the carved mogul right, stones, right. but in sort of a groovier way. So the way they've studied it with these little star motifs, I just so think it's So would these fabulous. stones be old stones? They could be a mix. Yeah. They, you never know. They could have come from some of her old jewelry. Right. They, Van Cleef could have had them, you know, just in the coffers. Yeah. Um, so there could be a mix, or some of them could have been new acquisitions, newly cut for the piece. All right, so now we're going to move on to another fabulous woman. Okay. Um, this is a discovery for all of us, yes. again. So these were from the collection of um, Natalie Paley. She was a, a Russian emigre in Paris. When she was about 21 years old, I think, she met the designer Lucien Lalonde. Mm -hmm. She went behind the counter selling perfume at his salon. Yeah. She ended up coming to the United States uh -huh. with one of her dearest friends, Fulco de Verdora. Uh -huh. Who designed, designed all of these beautiful pieces. Actually, uh, not this one, this is Boisbach. So we'll okay, over there. okay. But these are all um, pieces from Verdura. You know, the thing about great jewelry is I could look at these pieces and without you even saying a word, I would know it was Verdura. We use the word jemmy. Sometimes yes. people out of the business don't, they think they're all gems. So when we call something jemmy, it means that it is the best example of whatever yes. it is. And to use oh, these jemmy little emeralds in that brooch, I think was just a real hallmark of not yes. only um, Verdura quality, right. but also doing something so special for right. such a special client right. that was his friend. Right. That's a, that really beautiful. This made is piece. amazing. So since we're on Verdura, I have to show you something that we just we just put into the sale oh, and, it, okay. and it actually found its way onto the cover of the catalog. Uh, okay, this, Star Lot. This is the Star Lot, one of, one yes, of many. We've yes. got some nice ones. But this is such an exceptional jewel oh, wow. and such an exceptional What's that stone. In the center? It is a vivid yellow diamond. Oh, wow. More than 14 carats. And honestly, if the GIA could come up with a new color classification, they should do it for this stone. Because I've never this seen This color is extraordinary. It's extraordinary. Absolutely. It is a, a specimen beyond. Um, so this must have been a special commission. It was a special commission okay. in the 90s um, by Verdura. Okay. And uh, the client, I believe, had the stone previously yeah. and then commissioned Verdura to create this beautiful uh -huh. iris, all these cabochon sapphires. And it's a masterpiece. This is really a masterpiece of both design right, and right. gem quality. Yes. And then I have one more fabulous piece okay. to show you. This is such a special color. Try that on. This is a... This um, is a diamond? It's a diamond. Yep. It's a fancy gray-blue diamond, oh, cushion I cut. I love gray diamonds. I do too. Oh, I think, I think they are the most subtle, stealth stone there is, really. Okay. I have a friend who has a really beautiful gray diamond engagement ring, and I just think it's the chicest, it's the chicest most diamond. understated thing. It's very big. It's this a, is gorgeous. The, the, the shape is what I love too, the color and the shape. What, uh, are, you, what are you taking home if I... If what I'm, am I taking for home? A, for okay. a parting gift. So this bracelet. Let's see this on you. And then that goes over that. Okay. 
Oh my gosh. Oh my god, this is amazing. It fits right in with the stack. Yeah, it does. This is good for office, right? Sometimes I like put big jewelry on and I sort of say like, oh gosh, what do you need? <laughs> yes, right? It's like in the office, at a meeting, and you just pull out the power jewel. I might have good. to leave that one here. <laughs> Thank you again, Stephen. Uh, this thanks. is great. It's so I really great appreciate to see it. you. Thank you so much. Thank you.